Hi there, I'm Bethany Motes. Welcome to the ComSol series of post-processing tutorials where we show you how to utilize the wide variety of post-processing tools that ComSol Multiphysics has to offer. Today I will explain some of the more advanced visualization techniques available in ComSol so you can create the optimal display of results for your model. In particular, I will show you how to display a revolution, mirror image, extrusion, sector array, or periodic array of your data. This allows you to take advantage of the symmetries in your model to cut down on computational time and memory usage during the simulation, yet still allows you to plot your results on the fold geometry. I'm going to demonstrate these techniques using a few different models from the model library. For the first model, I choose View, Model Library, then I select Microfluidics Module, Two-Phase Flow, and Jet Instability LS, and click Open Model. This model shows the breakup of a liquid droplet in air, as you would find in an inkjet printer application. Here, the laminar two-phase flow level set interface is used to determine the interface between the liquid surrounded by air. This interface is defined by the line where the volume fraction equals 0.5. You'll also notice that this is a 2D axisymmetric model, which is given away by the line of symmetry here with the label R equals zero. For any 2D axisymmetric model, a data set called Revolution 2D will be created by default when solving your problem. If we take a look at this Revolution 2D data set, we'll see that it takes its source data from solution one and the axis of this revolution is defined by two points, the points 0, 0 and 0, 1. Hence, the z-axis is the line of symmetry here. Next, if we look in the revolution layers section, you'll see that this has a start angle and a revolution angle. The start angle tells you where your revolution uh, will start at, and the revolution angle tells you by how many degrees you'd like to revolve this uh, 2D data set by. So here we start at zero degrees and do a full 360 degree revolution. If we want to plot this data set to see what it's going to look like, we can use the plot icon up here. And here you see a cylinder, which is simply a 360 degree revolution of our original geometry. Also for this physics, you'll see a default plot called volume fraction 3D here. This, you'll note, uses the Revolution 2D data set that was created by default. And this plots an isosurface plot of the volume fraction at the level 0.5, which is where the interface between the liquid and the air is defined at. Keep in mind here, that the revolution data set is just like any normal 3D geometric data set in that you can plot any plot on the revolved data set as you would be able to a full 3D model. Hence how we are able to create an isosurface plot here on this revolution data set. But this current data set shows a complete revolution of the geometry by 360 degrees. What if we'd like to see the solution in the interior regions of the volume? In order to do this, we'll need to create a second Revolution 2D dataset. To do this, we can right-click on Datasets, and then we can choose Revolution 2D. We'll want to keep the same axis as the z-axis, but here we can change the start angle to negative 90 degrees, and we can change the revolution angle to 270 degrees. Now if we plot that, you'll see that we can see a slice has been cut out of uh, the revolved data set so that we can now uh, peer into the insides of this volume. Now to take advantage of this data set, we can create a new 3D plot group and choose the data set to be the second Revolution 2D data set that we just created. 
And then we can add a plot to that that's a volume plot. We can plot something here like in the laminar two-phase flow heading. We can plot the velocity magnitude. Go ahead and plot that. And you'll see that the volume has been plotted on the revolved data set. And we can see inside the data set to get a better idea of how this full solution is going to look on the completed geometry. If you wanted to add some context to this plot of the velocity, we could add to this plot group a contour plot where we plot the volume fraction level again at 0.5 at the fluid interface. Now we can get a better idea of where those interfaces lie within the context of the plotted velocity. Now each of these graphs has just been a snapshot in time of these expressions. So maybe we want to now create an animation uh, that involves this revolved data set to see how the droplet is breaking up over time. In order to do that, we'll come down here, choose Export, Player. Now we're going to create an animation of the isosurface plot, which is the volume fraction 3D plot. We'll choose to have only 10 frames in our video. Then we'll go ahead and click to generate the frames. As you'll see the progress bar over here in the bottom showing the progress of the generated frames. And then when that's done, we'll go ahead and click play and watch the breakup of this droplet. Next, I will show you how to use the common mirror transform for a model with traditional reflection symmetry, and I'll show you how you can string together data sets.